I am Kabuki Palitsui, working as Plant Protection Officer under the Ministry of Agricultural Development and Food Security Division of Plant Protection. Every year we receive incidents of quillia and we have since established breeding size. Since the formation of the division in 1986, we have been controlling quillia using various methods. This quillia is favored by the environment, mostly abundant water supplies around breeding sites, grass feed, and acacia trees which they use for nesting and as cover. We also receive quillia from neighboring countries. Botswana has entered into a memorandum of understanding with neighboring countries, Zimbabwe and South Africa, from which we usually receive quillia colonies. Botswana also purchased chemicals and offered to Zimbabwe to be used in parks bordering the two countries. Quilia mostly attack millet and soga. This year alone in Pandamatenga they have planted 10,000 hectares of sorghum and around 400 hectares of millet. Quilia result in crop losses. Without interventions, losses may go up to 80% to 100%. Every year between February and July, the control teams are engaged on the ground to fight quillia. With farmer interventions like early planting, bed scaring and choice of cultivar, including government interventions, losses are reduced to about 10 to 30 percent. In monetary terms, losses due to quillia can go from $160 to $260 per hectare. We employ several control methods in Botswana. We use chemicals where we usually control up to 80% of the quillia colonies. Since the formation of the division, Fentan was used and it has its own stories until it was phased out. It was then replaced by Cyanophos, which is currently used for both uh, ground spraying and aerial spraying using drones. We also use a method where we, we use explosive mix, mixing uh, diesel and, and petrol in a certain ratio and using some explosive materials to make small bombs. This method has its own successes and failures as it destroys the environment. We promote use of natural enemies like the use of falcons. The government has done a lot to lead to the establishment of the falcon company which operates in Pandamatenga. So this method was introduced in 2013. A very environmentally friendly method. The falcon only scares the quillia and never catch it. This method is attributed to reducing losses to less than 3%. Some farms here have been cleaned up, 300 hectares over there, 70% loss in a matter of three weeks or something. My damage this year is less than 1%. My neighbor across there, his damage is 70%. You know, I cannot farm sorghum without the falcons. It's, it's not, uh, not, not viable. As you can see, there is no cruelty to to quillia. It only pushes the quillia outside the the sorghum fields, actually pushing it to to its original diet which is grass. Quillia is moved to national parks nearby, therefore availing quillia for tourism activities. We may be aware that tourism is one of the biggest uh, income earner for the country. You can see they are integrating it with the sirens. Then the falcon operator is calling it with the whistle. As you can see, it arriving there. If you had to increase the use of falcon, it will call for more trained staff. This method of using falcons is more appropriate for big fields. The falcon likes flying and uh, has a good vision, so uh, this large field will 
enable the falcon to, to be flying around. Farmers are encouraged to scare the birds using scarecrows, sirens and other things they employ. We also encourage agronomic practices including early planting in some areas and choice of cultivars.